Welcome to a new episode of my Home Automation Open Hub and Node-RED playlist. I posted a video on some of smart Wi-Fi switches in the past, especially how to flash them and upload the ESP Easy firmware. But I thought it would be only fair to make a video on what the stock Sonoff offers with the app provided by the manufacturer. So um, I have to say I really like the Sonoff. Uh, and I ordered five new of them, and uh, and I thought that um, uh, I will use this for some special projects as well. But first, let's set it up with the stock, uh, obviously with the with the firmware which it was supplied with, and and see what the um, the application, the standard application, provides in terms of functionality. Just as before, I got mine from the UK eBay from a seller called Media Online. Um, they have. Um, a version which supports um, RF remote uh, controls as well, but which is a slightly bit more expensive. So I got the the, the one which is Wi-Fi only, and they it is uh, three point seven five pounds at the moment. And again, in the box you get some mounting screws, uh, you get the Sonoff switch itself, and well, that's all. So uh, in the back of the box, oops. I think probably this one is better. Yeah, you have the QR code to download the application for iOS, Android, and and a link to the user guide. And uh, here are the specs again. Um, so it's it's universal voltage, and it support it has a 10 amp uh, relay. So anything up to 2.2 kilowatts, it can handle. Uh, one thing I would like to point out. Uh, well, going back to the, the, the layout of the connection, it's really, really easy. You have the input this side, you have the output this side, and that's pretty much it. So it's, it's clearly labeled, this is live and this is neutral, and the same on the other side. So it doesn't have earth. So if you are planning to switch something which requires earth, like, um, I don't know, some sort of heater, then just make sure that you route the earth wire across. And again, make sure that you are not switching anything above 10 amps. And I realize these are not mounting screws, but this is how you secure these uh, tabs which protect the terminals. Um, and, and you have some simple screw terminals on each end to, get, um, to hook up your wire. So uh, setting it up is really, really easy. Again, um, if, you, if you need something which looks more like a wall plug, um, IT also sells that as well, so if you go online and, and search for Sonoff, you will find the main website. So they have the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the plug version as well, with you know, Euro, um, European, UK and, and US plugs as well, uh, if you prefer to have that one. So it would have the same functionality, it's just a different form factor. So ideally you would um, connect this with the, you know, the lead which goes into your you know, device, your lamp, whatever that you want to control. My test rig is complete now, and as you can see, I have um, I've powered up all five of the, the Sonoff switches. So the, the main comes here from an energy meter, which is showing 3.2, 3.3 watts on standby for these five units. So each draw about, you know, 0 0.64, 0 0.65 watts on standby. Um, so they all connected on the on the input and on the output. I just simply connected a uh, LED bulb, and I haven't done anything else other than plugged it in. And you can see that the the status LED is flashing, which probably means that it's not connected. But still, if I press the button, I can control the the output locally. So the next step is is to download the application. Uh, using the link on the on the back of the case, um, create an account and link these Sonos switches to that account. I'm going to demonstrate this on an Android phone, but probably it's uh, the user experience is quite similar on iOS as well. So I've already downloaded the application and I've already done the registration as well. So it's a simple two-step registration uh, where you provide your email address, you get an ID, you put that ID in or the code and then you register. So um, now my screen is really simple because I don't have any devices. So um, actually I'm going to do this for the first time. So hopefully it works. Um, obviously I'm connected to my local internet. Uh, so I'm going to press plus and it tells me that in order to 
power the device, I press the button for 5 seconds. So I'm doing it on my first one. And uh, now it's flashing quickly. Okay, maybe I should do next. Oh, okay, and now I need to provide my password. Okay, I put in my password. There was a couple of uh, things on, um, like confirmation messages on Android, like I allow the application to have access to my wireless settings and some of the other stuff. So it's trying to pair the device, and at the same time, the the blue, the green LED is uh, flashing quickly. Uh, okay found the first generation device wonderful okay let's wait to see what happens maybe I should have pressed the pair button on all of them and so I can pair all of them at the same time oh, so that's the message I'm getting hmm okay uh, maybe I try again so I just followed the same process as before and um, and now I'm greeted with this screen uh, saying that oh we, there is a new device and I should give it a device name so um, I'm just going to call it Son of One uh, and that's the first in a row and now the the green LED is is lit continuously uh, maybe do it nice Son of One complete add successfully added wonderful and yeah, it is working. Actually, it's quite fast. I thought it would be somewhat slower because obviously this, uh, when I press here, the information goes up to the cloud and then comes back to turn the uh, the relay on. But uh, yeah, it's surprisingly quick. So I have the first device set up. I probably go ahead and then do the other four off camera. Okay, so I tried the second one and it didn't work and it's still flashing quickly, which means that it's still in setup mode. So um, I'm trying to follow the instructions and and as you can see there is a wireless network which is called IT and uh, whatever ID. So I'm gonna, going to connect to it using the password of 12345678. And uh, okay, saved. I'm going back to the application and and mm, Okay, so I'm not connected to that again because there is, hmm. Okay, so the device has just gone out of the setup mode because it's again blinking slowly. So I'm going to uh, press on the button again for five seconds. Okay, it's blinking fast. Oops, sorry, not this one. Nah, shut up. This one. It's so damn fiddly. Okay, it's connecting now. Connected, there's no internet connection, yeah. I'm fine, I know that. Um, ah, stupid. And now it's disconnecting. Okay. It's extremely fiddly. Uh, it probably took like 15 minutes for the first one to set up and I'm probably spending another 10 minutes on the second one. So it might take me the entire afternoon until I get all five of them connected to my account. Well, I have given up uh, configuring the Sonoff on my Android phone. Um, it wasn't working for what for whatever reason, but I have an old iPad and I install the iOS application which it seems to be only compatible with the phone so it's uh, it looks a little bit weird but anyway it works and uh, the setup procedure in this one is, is again fairly simple you you click on the in the new button and again you you hold down the uh, the button on the device so it starts flashing actually though it asks you which pattern it flashes it's the first one so you do the next and it's the usual thing on the iOS so it doesn't chain the app doesn't connect to the, the, the new wireless network so you have to do it manually so you go to settings and the wireless and then after some time you would see the um, 
the the new network which is called IT something something um, just give it a little bit of time maybe rescan the network um, yeah and then the password is one two three four five six seven eight and it says it's unable to join and I put the same password back again and then it joins to the to the network that was created by the switch you go back to the application you click next it asks for your Wi-Fi again so again you just click next and it does that whole process what it does on the on the Android as well but um, it seems to be working here without any issues so we just have to wait a little bit and then it will ask us the um, the same question what would be the name of the of the new device okay so here we are so I'm just going to name it son of oh I'm already at four so there is only one more to go and you click on add add it successfully and way works and just a few minutes later and logging back into my Android app, I can see all five of my switches. You see that the, the LED is now lit continuously, which probably means that it's connected to the network. Oh, by the way, it's quite nice because it shows the, you can see the single uh, strength in the, in the app as well. And, ah, sorry, got it back. And you can start turning the the lights on. Ah, sorry, somebody's at the door. Again, just a bit of comment on the working. So when you click, then the the application pauses to send the 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 message through the network and probably get the uh, confirmation back. So you can't just quickly turn off all the lights because that happens. Anyway, this is just how the application works. So back in the application, again, if you click on the switch symbol, it turns the, the, the switch on and off. And if you just click on the, the bar itself, then it goes into like a separate screen where you can have some information on the, on well, that's the d device. And uh, yeah, in the settings, you can rename it or uh, for example, define the, uh, the power and state which is actually quite handy and and here now uh, there are a few things that we can do again turn it on and off here so I'm back here day two of my son of testing uh, by the way sorry for the for my voice on this video but I think I'm coming down with the flu um, so what yesterday I've done is I've, I've configured the um, all of the five devices that I have and I started to play around with, with some of the extra functionality so as I said you can turn them on and off simple as that and then when you click on the main bar then it comes to this main screen where well you can do a couple of things so first about the the sharing which I'm not going to demonstrate here but if um, uh, somebody has another account you can share your devices so they can gain control over the device uh, fairly simple so the next one is the timer and um, in in timers you can set uh, times when you want either the uh, you want the son of to either turn on or turn off so it's simple um, and you can say that um, I want one specific time so then you specify a date and a time or you put repeat and then you can specify the num the, uh, the day of the month uh, sorry the day of the week when the, um, the this uh, trigger should apply and let's say at um, 204 the device should turn on and so you save that and it usually only takes a second oh please try again later whatever uh, actually it did save because uh, you can probably see the video that it says come on and, um, and actually what if I go back because I was you see it's it's actually there so it did save those settings and um, 
okay going back and I'm going to say that yeah uh, also on every day I want this to be turned off at 05 205 and yeah and the slider shows that uh, the timer is active and the delete button gets you to uh, lets you to delete the timer and you can set up up to eight and the documentation said that um, this these um, triggers actually saved on the sun off so even if the sun off loses internet connection it will um, it will still work but the other thing you have to keep in mind is the ESP doesn't have oh now the uh, two, uh, 405 timer has triggered, so it's off now. So um, one thing to keep in mind is the ESP doesn't have a real-time clock. So if you uh, if it loses power, then uh, unless it has internet connection, it wouldn't be able to get the correct time. So again, then um, I haven't tested it, but probably it would default back to like midnight, and then uh, your timers would be off. But again, this uh, should be just a design consideration. So unless you have internet connection, uh, power outputs would probably, you know, um, create a throw up your um, timer settings. The next one is the countdown. I also set some countdown for this uh, for this first sort of. So I turn it on, and um, okay. You know, see, it's weird. The, the sun off is on, but it didn't get the update. Oh, now it gets the update that is actually turned on. So anyway, and then you can set up again timers. So it's a countdown timer. So you say that after, let's say, how many days, hours, and minutes, it should turn either on and off. And um, so you have these timers here, and you can just click on start to start the timer. So I have two of these timers which turn off. Well, turn off after one minute, turn on af under after five minutes, and again turn off after one minute. So the two are the same. So if I say start on this one, then you know it becomes like a enable disable, and then I can start another one. So what I have done now is I've started a timer so it turns sorry off after one minute, and then it will turn on after five minutes. So you can set it up as like a like an on delay off delay but you always have to do it manually so you can't set an automism saying that if I turn this on either via the button or manually then it should automatically turn off after 15 minutes because unless you come here on the countdown and you and you click it's not going to happen which I find uh, I mean a little bit odd and and the whole you know user interface and the user experience a little bit you know strange and now you can see that the one minute delay has expired so it's it's available to be started again so after five minutes it will come on um, and then one more feature I wanted to say which I programmed to this son of five uh, again so you have timer countdown here and then if you click on this button then you have this loop timer and I mean, again, this user, uh, this whole user interface is so confusing. Like, you have functionality here, you have functionality here as well, and um, and this one, I mean, you know, try to understand this. So it says that uh, it run this, like it's a two minutes, two minute run, and then it does open at the beginning, and after one minute, one minute, it does a close. And it starts at a specific time. So the way it is set up, as I'm showing it on the screen, which makes this sort of to turn on for one minute and turn off for one minute. But again, this whole screen is uh, designed is absolutely appalling. And um, and then if you want to set this one to let's say two, then you get this message that the second time should be less than the first time. And um, Again, I don't quite understand the whole concept. So probably this top one, um, it, it is the entire cycle, and then it starts the cycle either in open or closed state. And after, within that cycle, after this delay, it then again you can set it to open and close. So, like, if you want to do like an on-off or an off-on cycle. Uh, it, in here you specify the total duration of the cycle and in, in this one you specify you know within that cycle after such delay it should change the state and again it only starts at this specific time so but unless you disable it it will just keep running that cycle over and over again so um, 
I guess it's 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 kind of useful for like uh, if you want to do some repeated tasks. Again, I can't really tell whether that would work without the internet connection because I would assume it's you need a cloud in order to send the messages to turn off to turn on and off. And the other thing which I don't like at all is uh, unless you go on here into the loop timer, there's nothing on the screen which tells you that the, the loop is active. Even if you come here, there's nothing on the screen. It just all of a sudden it turns on. So like you have to come here and then every time you have to go to the loop timer and then actually, you know, work out that, okay, now it's enabled and the time has passed. So it must be doing the loop one. At least the state updates according to the, to the actual state of the lamp. So, um, yeah, and a uh, couple of more functionalities here, sorry. Uh, you can see all your devices, you can group your devices, you can sh uh, show the devices that you have shared, mm, fair enough. And uh, one more thing here is this scene mode. And it says IFTTT, and I thought, oh, this is great, I, I can connect to IFTT. But actually, it is not, it just, um, they use this for whatever reason, I can't really tell. And um, what you do here is, um, is not bad, but again, with, with these devices, it's... Uh, it's, it's quite limited what you can do is uh, you give the, the scene a name fine and then you can give a trigger so you click here and you say okay what should be the trigger for this action and uh, you can do trigger device but I don't have anything which would be a trigger device um, let me turn this off so you can only do this click to execute. So Sonoff do have some other products which do temperature measurement or consumption so probably they could be used as a trigger device and then uh, click to execute, so that's my trigger. Again, the, I don't know why the line is here and not here. I mean, when it meets, click execute. So, and this is the group where you are dividing it with line. Again, the, the UI is so confusing. So then, okay, if you click execute, what is it that you want to execute? Um, and you, you list the devices like, okay, son of one, and you want to either turn it on and off. So that's pretty much all you can do. And then you, you come to the uh, scene, you press run, and now uh, sort of 4 and 5 in my setup is turned on. And that's pretty much it. And again, um, um, you can't create something which like at a specific time turn two of them off or three of them on or anything like that because the scenes work on well, in, in this particular setup, it only works on uh, manual input. So again, that is a bit of a limitation. So the other thing I wanted to show is um, here again, you can do, you can scan user manual and then you point to the QR code, which is on the back of the, um, of the box. Okay, so I got the link now. Uh, so users, guys, yes, I want English. And, and then you, you have the devices and I have the son off. And um, so you can see it's, um, uh, it seems that it was mostly a, um, the English manual was done with some sort of auto translation tool. So you get a, you know, set up and the quick links and you know, how to set it up, which is, is pretty much useless because you can read it on the screen as well. So this is how you pair. And then the RF1, which I don't care. So F features. So yeah, you can share, find timing. And that's it. That's all it, it tells you about the timing. So it says uh, supports up to uh, eight timing schedules. And then the presets will work even if the Wi-Fi is not available. But obviously it needs the power. Okay, fair enough. And set the defined, um, default state. I think we have seen that. Uh, security mechanism is yeah if you are the owner then nobody else can you know modify that and uh, the sort of only can have one owner actually it doesn't even talk about the security how the what is the connection between the cloud and the device is that secure or not and that's it yeah and then some you know uh, Q and uh, sorry what is it troubleshooting there's nothing on the countdown there is really not much detail on the on the timer and absolutely nothing on the loop one so this user manual is absolutely useless my short wording on the son of devices is, is that i still like the the hardware i think it's uh, it's good and it's a very good price 
but uh, the the stock firmware and the app uh, the, the features in the application are pretty much useless so as you can see with you can set up eight timers so it gives you a functionality which is similar to any cheap uh, main timers uh, that you can get uh, from the home, home improvement stores which they don't uh, support wireless so the only comfort the Sonoff gives you is that you can you know change the timers from your couch inside where the timer you know the son of mine could be outside in the in the elements um the loop functionality yeah again um some people might use these uh um loop timers or let's say you have a valve well and you know that you can run the pump every 15 minutes uh, sorry every hour for 15 minutes you can set up a timer for that probably fine so again the features are are pretty similar to any general timers but with a Wi-Fi functionality and of course don't remember, um, don't forget that the via the app and the whole cloud you can control it from anywhere so you don't have to be on the same network you can be on 3G or any other network I will still probably buy these son of devices and the first thing I'm going to do is flash the firmware to something else and that's what I'm be what I will be covering in most of my other videos one more thing I wanted to mention um, so just a few minutes ago I unplugged the main cord which powers all five of the devices and I just plugged it back again and I did it probably about half a minute ago or maybe one minute ago and now you can see that all of them are flashing and I did notice that last well, quite a few times yesterday evening and even this morning that um, the devices are not able to connect back to the network so even in the in the app it's all is saying that all five of them are offline and I was playing around with that like m multiple times yesterday evening and sometimes number number four would come on sometimes none of them and and again today I just plugged it in and all five came online and I unplugged it plugged it back again all five was there and now and unplugged it, plugged it back again, and that's what you see now. So none of them are able to connect. And um, I would say it's definitely not the hardware issue or not the ESP issue, because the, I do have another Sonoff, and that is able to go back to the wireless every time I plug it back on. So it could be down to the this software that they um, that they provide with the devices. I don't know, the maybe there is a limit how much they try to connect to the wireless, Again, I don't have a very you know high spec router. I'm just using the one that was provided by the service provider. But again, like you know, why would I need to buy a really expensive one to get some you know really simple devices? I mean, you know, they don't use any data at all. So I'm guessing it could be done to the software and and you know they maybe try for 10 seconds and maybe the fact that all five of them are connected at the same time and all five of them try to connect to the wireless and. Uh, they just don't don't get a response in time and they just give up and uh, I would say this is really troubling because that could be a real scenario where you your power is cut and when the power comes back online they all of them will try to connect to the network at the same time and they will just fail and you know what would you do if they are all wired in most cases you there is no option to um, you know unplug them individually and A will be a you know a huge nuisance. So uh, that's probably one downside to uh, the stock application or the stock firmware within the Sonoff. So I think my verdict is going to be that um, I will keep buying these units definitely, but uh, my first thing would be just to uh, flash the firmware and use ESP Easy or something else on it, and just happily use it with. A different application or in a different uh, uh, software environment. So I think that would be my view of the stock solve and um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.